Hydrofoiling has been around for a long time, but kind of the, where it started for surfing, I guess, has been the was the air chair, which an inventor put a, basically a hydrofoil on a, on a single mass underneath a, a, a seat seated um, chair that you could tow behind a boat, and they did all kinds of cool moves, and uh, that that looked pretty pretty cool and fun, doing big jumps and stuff. And then some, some guys like Laird Hamilton, Dave Kalama, those guys um, actually put the air chair on a, on a surfboard or, or actually more like a wakeboard. And with bindings and stuff, they were riding these big waves um, on, on one of those foils. So then that kind of like the towing foiling kind of became a thing and people were developing specialized foils for that. And then more recently, um, Alex Aguera in Maui was one of the pioneers in for the um, subfoiling or, or foiling on a regular surfboard or Santa board, and um, at lower speeds with bigger, bigger foils and thicker foils, basically that allowed you to fly at lower speeds and just kind of paddling into the wave to get it. And uh, you know, I got into it. My friend Jeff Chang and I kind of got into it together, and uh, and it's just like uh, once you try it and you get that feel of just flying over the water, it kind of hooks you and you want to learn it. It's just a new challenge. Uh, that we that we got into and then it's really the most efficient way you can move across the water basically when you have when you're on a surfboard you always have that drag the surface drag of the board but on a foil once your board lifts out you have very minimal drag so the feeling you have is, is the sensation of just flying over the water and and it's almost silent and you just have you know you can go left you can go right almost no wave at all you get this crazy feeling of this have, having these superhuman powers it feels I kind of feel like like Batman flying through the air or something like that you know it's like just an um, incredible sensation and uh, just something I've been totally hooked on and even when the waves aren't that good I just want to get out in the water and and learn every day I get a little bit better every day is a new challenge so it's been super fun to get um, have something new to to get excited about so breaching is an issue when you're foiling, of course. So the, the hard part in the beginning is to kind of rethink what you're doing because if the, if the foil comes out of the water uh, or, or breaches the surface of the water, basically, then what happens is that it loses lift and, and then you come crashing down. So, so the important thing is to keep the foil always just under the surface of the water where it doesn't breach the surface and lose lift, basically. As soon as the top part of the foil re reaches the surface, you lose lift. So that's br what breaching is and especially in the beginning if you're a surfer like what you learn is when you're dropping into a steep wave you kind of lean on your back foot to keep the nose from purling and stuff like that so when you're foiling you have to kind of totally rethink it as soon as you're up on the foil um, you have to keep if the wave is real steep you basically have to follow the contour of the wave with your board or, you know basically you're controlling the foil with the board so you have to have that foil at the same angle of the wave so it's really hard to take off on a really steep wave on steeper waves, really, it makes more sense to use a regular surfboard than a foil. But what's fun on the slopey waves, you can follow the wave and you can go left and right and stay high on, on that wave and, and just have a lot of speed. So what I love is, to me, a little bit like windsurfing, we have this extra speed that you can't really achieve by just pumping on a wave. You can like fly up and down the, the wave, you can make sections, you can hit the lip really hard, you can do roundhouse cutbacks and, and have like all, a lot of speed all the way through and so you know I, I'm still learning for sure I, I get a little bit better every day but it's just uh, so many new things to, to try and experience and um, that's what makes it fun for me. So I can say that foiling's definitely changed my daily um, routine like every morning I pretty much check the surf and where when I used to stand a paddle I would only go out when the waves looked really good I would check the forecast I wouldn't even go check it out if, unless it was really good now even if it's like one to two I'll go down and check it out if there's some rideable walls I'm like I'm out there because I'm having fun you know no matter like even the really small crumbly waves um, I can I can have fun you know and I can do fast turns like roundhouse cutbacks and ride the wave really long all this kind of stuff that I couldn't do on a regular Santa board or, or on a surfboard just because you have so little drag and and so much speed it, it just opens up a lot of you know the conditions don't matter as much you know actually you're kind of looking for the uncrowded ways that the surfers don't even want to go on you know those are the best days for foiling if the waves are really good and steep and fast, perfect for surfing, then yeah, I'll jump back on a regular um, surf or stand-up board. But anything else, foil just makes it exciting again, you know. So for me, it's been just adding a lot of excitement into my surf surfing again. 
So for me, and I think for most people that are into foiling now with surfing and stand-up paddling, what started the whole craze was Kyleni basically posting a video of himself doing a downwinder on a, and he was using like an 11 foot board or something like that. And just like on a race board, just foiling on a downwinder. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is amazing. That's what I want to do. And he was so enthusiastic about it too. He's like, this is the future and stuff like that. And I'm like, you're right. This is the future that I want to get into it. You know? So to me, that was the moment when, when it all started for me, when I got excited about it, about foiling before I was always like, oh yeah, these guys are wearing like snowboard boots and getting towed behind a jet ski. I, I don't really want to get it. It seems way too complicated and, and dangerous and whatever, but doing it in a downwinder, that seemed like the, that seemed like so cool, you know? So that's kind of what started for me. And yeah, Kyleni is definitely one of the pioneers of the sport. And also seeing Dave Kalama has really motivated, motivates me because he's like even older than I am. So if he can do it, I should be able to do it too, right? So, so I've, done, I've done a bunch of downwinders on, on foils. And I have to say, it's a lot harder than, than you would think. Uh, like, because it takes a certain amount of takeoff speed to be able to start foiling. So to get everything right, to get the right bump, you just have, you need good conditions. If the conditions are mediocre, the, the power it takes to get into a bump and get up to that speed where you can foil is uh, more challenging than you would think. And definitely having the right equipment is super important. You need a foil that's big enough to lift you up at that low speed of, of um, downwinding. And depending on your body weight, it has to lift, be, be able to lift you up. So it has to be the right equipment and, uh, and, it, and it, I would say it's a lot harder to learn how to do a downwind, how to downwind foil than just learning in some waves. You know, the wave gives you that push that allows you to, um, to catch, catch and foil a wave. And so that's a good way to start. When you get good at that and you, you learn how to fly the foil well, then you can think about doing downwinders. And another thing, when you're first starting out, we highly recommend you starting behind a boat. You know, like have, have someone that knows how to foil take you out on a boat and give you pointers while you're trying to learn how to fly it. Once you get that feeling for flying the foil and getting out of the water and flying it level, that will make surfing so much easier. So a little bit about the whole industry of foiling. Like when I, when I first started, I didn't really think about the, um, you know, the business aspects of it. Like I, I always thought it's going to be a really small niche market. There's going to be only a handful of people that are really going to get into it because it is kind of hard to learn, especially at first. It's pretty challenging. And uh, I mean, once you figure it out, it's, you can actually learn it pretty quick. It's not as hard as it seems at first, but the first few times is, is, can be frustrating and, uh, and very humbling. So I thought it wouldn't be, become a big market, but now just a year later, like, you know, our every single one of our orders that we've placed, uh, anticipating demand, it's just been like, everything always sells out before we even get it. You know, like we can't keep stuff in stock. The demand is amazing. So especially if you have a good, well thought out product that, that works and it's tested and, and, and designed well, it's, it's easy to sell it right now. It's like everybody wants it and it's like the factories can't keep up with the demand. Like I keep incre we keep increasing our orders and we just can't get the stuff fast enough at this, at this point. I'm sure it's gonna change and a lot of people are getting into it. But for us, you know, stand up paddling, especially in Hawaii, it's been around for quite a while now and it, we went through a period of rapid growth and then kind of, um, a mature market and if, if anything I would say regular stand-up surfing or stand-up paddling has been a little bit of a decline like race attendance probably on a decline um, and and maybe we still can see a lot of people getting into it is the beginner market is there the rental market is there but um, but it's it's just become a more mature market so it's it's been harder a lot of people went out of business that were in the stand-up paddle business so we've seen a lot of stores closing and uh, retailers going out of business so it's not an easy market and definitely the foiling is like a new thing that people are excited about. Even people that have a garage full of stand-up boards, they also now want to have a foil board in their quiver. And, and then once they get into it, they don't want just one foil board, but they want maybe a couple boards and then a set of foils, different size foils for different conditions. So, you know, there's, a, there's even more equipment involved than in, in stand-up surfing. So yeah, the, um, there, it has a lot of potential for the industry, but I also see a lot of, uh, crappy product on the market like people are trying to save a little bit of money by or actually you can save a lot of money by ordering a foil directly from China through AliExpress or something like that people buying foils for like 300 bucks and then they try them and it's basically a waste of money if it doesn't work right so a lot of those foils are not designed by people who know what they're doing so 
just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's going to work and a lot of times that can be just a waste of money and then a lot of people end up buying the good foil a well-designed foil anyways because if you enjoy it you want you want to be on the right gear right so so with the easy foiler boards it's actually been a process of r d like uh, the original board i made um, I noticed when I was riding the way the tail was touching a lot I, and I chopped off 10, 10 inches off the tail and it was kind of funky looking but it worked a lot better. I was able to like do tighter turns and stuff like that because the foil was closer to the tail and there's le less tail to get in the way basically. So that's something we incorporated basically bringing the foil further back especially on the shorter models. And then um, just a lot of small things like the rail shape. Um, and then the bottom shape, like right now we have, in, the tail has kind of a V with concaves, which makes it harder for a plate mount. So the next version, uh, the kind of our V3 or 4, it now has like a kind of a flat part in the middle and it keeps the concaves on the si further on the side. And we made the, the rails even more tucked under. We made the nose a little bit more rounded off. And then the bottom of the nose, instead of being concave, we made it like a slightly bulbous. So a little bit more like a, a race board with kind of a, um, a softer entry into choppy water. Also, when you're coming down hard from a breach, sometimes that concave, even though it's nice for catching the wave because it creates lift, um, it also kind of can get stuck on the water if you come down hard and fast. So hopefully that, um, you know, I actually haven't tried the latest prototype is coming soon. So we, we, you know, we always try to innovate and, and improve on what we have. So and it's, it's a lot of testing, a lot of trying a lot of different things.